Hello everyone. If you're not familiar um, with this little event that happened at the Skeptics Conference in Ireland, um, there are links to all of them, all that I'm about to talk about in the bottom bar. But Rebecca Watson was at a conference where she uh, had been speaking about feminism, being a feminist and a woman in a skeptical society meaning the smaller society, not society writ large. We wish it was skeptical. Um, but uh, she was at, a, at the hotel bar until about 4 a.m. talking with a bunch of people, and a guy got onto the elevator with her and said, please don't talk this, or please don't take this the wrong way, but I find you very interesting. Uh, would you like to come up to my hotel room and have a cup of coffee. And um, she was creeped out and said no, you know, being given this proposition while alone uh, in an elevator, creeped her out, and she then called out this guy, not naming him, and said that that was a fucked up thing to do. In her next video, which is also linked in Scented Nectar's blog, um, you, you'll, if the, the first link is Scented Nectar's blog post about this, Rebecca's video is in there, Integral Maths 4 videos are in there, I've also linked Steph McGraw's video, or two blog posts about it, and I have something to say about that too. Um, and Scented Nectar links to the three thread, threads at Ferengula over this. Um... But she called him out because she's like, oh, I can't believe I was talking about feminist stuff all day, and then this guy hits on me. Uh, this guy sexualizes her, essentially, is what she says. Um, I just have a few things to say. Uh, oh, Richard Dawkins said, basically, trying to, as he might put it, put it in perspective, say that compared to the oppression that women experience in Islamic countries, this is just words. Um, and Steph McGraw um, attempted to say, to try and put it in perspective in an entirely different way. And I have things to say to each of these people. Um, to uh, Rebecca Watson, to Richard Dawkins, and Steph McGraw. And I, please, please take a look at this before you continue on the video. Please take up the links below so you'll have context, because context is important. Done? Uh, if you're not, do pause and take a look at them, because you'll be lost. But, all right. The first is I'd like to go over a few definitions. As Steph McGraw did, the definition of feminism is primarily the ad advocacy for the belief that men and women are of inher equal inherent worth and must be treated as such. And it is also advocacy for women's issues. But uh, it's that primary definition I really want to focus on. The second term is skepticism, which is basically the idea that things need to be tested, that propositions and ideas need to be tested. And those which are based on insufficient evidence need to be discarded or modified. And the third is a particular aspect of power. And that is when you can act on someone and they can't act back at you. When you make someone powerless. Now, I don't know what you prefer to be called, Mrs. Watson, um, Watson, Rebecca, whatever, you. Um, I will address the other people similarly. Um, one, assuming that the facts that you convey to us, not your feelings about what was said, but the facts of what happened were accurate, you have no leg to stand on in what you did in your video. In what you did in the elevator? Certainly. You 
you need no one's permission, and I'm not telling you, I'm stating an obvious fact, you need no one's permission to defend yourself from a possible threat. However, if you are going to call someone out and give enough information that they might be identified for something that they did not necessarily do, because even though you believe he was sexualizing you, even though you believe he was inviting you up for sexy time or whatever, you don't know this. And in fact, you made sure that the situation would not escalate in any direction, which was the entire point of saying, no, I'm tired, I'm going to bed. However, as a future suggestion, if you want to address people in a power-neutral way, do not call them out in public in ways that things can be traced back to them. And by the way, if I'm correct, people have already identified who this person is, and he will soon be feeling the consequences of it. Hopefully not. Hopefully people will not be stupid. But if you are going... If you are a feminist and into the idea of not using your privilege, yes, your privilege, as a speaker, as a celebrity, against people, then I suggest the next time you disagree with someone's behavior, you might want to send them an email, just a suggestion, saying, this is what I thought you did, this is why I thought it was not okay. Just a thought, rather than declaring things as fact, about which you have no possible positive knowledge other than your intuition, human or otherwise, human or whatever. There were no facts about what was going on in his head that were accessible to you. Second, to Richard Dawkins, saying just words when that could be implied but so much could be implied with words, when so much sexual harassment is words. I don't know what you're doing or who is advising you on how to approach the internet, but they're doing a very poor job. I would suggest that you stick to a factual analysis rather than attempting to go for subtlety on the internet. It's just not going to work. Think of when people are sitting in front of their sitting in front of their computers, imagine that your words are channeled directly to their amygdala and you have absolutely no idea what their emotional state is when your words arrive. This is why posting to the internet can be dicey. Back to Rebecca Watson. Um, Steph McGraw made an alternative proposition and about what your actions regarding your video calling out, calling out elevator guy um, might be interpreted as. And you spent only two minutes, but two minutes more than she had, in a publicly accessible forum, or in a public forum, with you up in a position of power. Once again, we're talking about privilege here and called her out. Whether directly or indirectly, that is a debate to, uh, of a debate for another time. But the point is, two times in this incident, you have used a position of privilege and power against people and attacked people when they were not in a position to attack back. And when they did not do Apparently, and I say apparently because I don't know everything everybody did. I only have what is laid out in the uh, links below. And they apparently did nothing to you that warrants the kind of unilaterally crushing response. And keep in mind, while it might be the metaphorical twitch of your pinky finger... To someone who does not have access to your resources, it is a crushing and humiliating and shaming response. Remember that feminism is the idea that men and women have equal inherent are of equal inherent worth and therefore should be treated as such. 
try and treat other people as such, at least in cases like this. I don't know what you're like the rest of the time. I'm making no conjecture about it. All I'm saying is that these two cases were not okay. And as someone who has an entire channel devoted to going rawr at people, I know that the temptation to use a podium, however large or small, can be very great. Um, and lastly, to Steph McGraw, your candor and your careful intellectual honesty, and especially in your second post, were very admirable. And I am sorry that you had to experience that at the hands of a skeptical society and still have to experience this. You didn't deserve it. And yeah, I should add P.Z. Myers in this too. For a scientist and someone who believes in evaluating evidence and someone who believes as a fe who is a feminist, you should have known better to than to go, yeah, Rebecca's analysis of the situation is absolutely correct. One eyewitness testimony, what, the testimony of one eyewitness is not enough information to make it a declarative judgment about a situation. It's not. And I'm going to catch a lot of shit for this, and that's nice, because this is the internet, there's enough shit for everyone to sling around. I don't care, because if you want to throw shit at me for the ideas that you shouldn't presume guilt, you know, it, that guilty until proven innocent is bullshit, and two, that there is a difference in the standard of evidence you need to defend yourself versus the standard of, of evidence you need to attack someone else publicly and from an asymmetrical power of balance or imbalance. If you think those two ideas suck, well then, go play in traffic. Thank you for your time and attention.